oh, probably been about three weeks now, we covered the basics of spreads and then the basics of binaries. And we've talked a little bit about last week about choosing the right binary. What we're gonna talk tonight is kind of choosing the right spread. It's titled Common Misconceptions um, of Nadex Spreads. So we're gonna talk about that and about how to choose the right spread and so on. So let's get rolling here. Let's knock out our disclosures real quick here. Uh, as always, trading futures, options, or any financial instrument involves risk. May not be suitable for every investor. Please consider these before making any decision. Any trading decision you make is your sole responsibility. Information in this webinar is for informational and educational purposes only. It's not an offer or solicitation of an offer to buy or sell any particular financial instrument offered by Nadex and past performance not indicative of future results. So if you're brand new to Nadex, hop on over to nadex.com. You can get some more information here about what products they offer. Basically, Nadex offers two different products. They offer binary options and they offer spreads. You can get some information about those two, two products here, and I'll show you where you can get some free education as far as how to trade them and different strategies and systems. Um, if you scroll down towards the bottom here, right here you'll see hours and holidays. Uh, you can check out what Nadex's hours for the holiday is gonna be this week for New Year's and New Year's Day. Uh, up top here under trading, if you don't have one already, go to the second tab here, demo trading platform and you can get a free demo account with Nadex. All you have to do is select a quick username, fill out some quick information, hit submit. In just a few moments, you'll get an email with a temporary password, and you can log right into the demo platform. They'll give you $25,000 of demo money to test out the platform, get familiar with how it works, the layout. Uh, over here off to the left-hand side, you see all the different instruments that they offer, binaries and spreads on, you can practice entering and exiting orders, any new strategies or systems that you're checking out, you definitely wanna test it out here in your demo account and not in your live account. So if you don't have one of those already, definitely hop over and take advantage of that. It's a free demo account and you can get that in just a couple minutes. In fact, if you don't already have one, hop on right now even while we're on this webinar and sign up for one, that way you can log right in. Might be helpful to follow along here with us on a few things, okay? From there, my name is John Skelton. I'm with, I'm not with Nadex. I'm with apexinvesting.com. Apex and Nadex are two separate different companies. Nadex is the exchange. Apex, we're an online trading, educational trading company. We're a group of traders helping traders. And we've got a ton of free information, literally hundreds of hours of free education you can take advantage of. If you go to our website, go to apexinvesting.com. Go right here to join free now. You can uh, get a free username and password. It'll give you access to um, a ton of information here, absolutely free. Once you have your username and password, you can log right in. A lot of information here. Uh, real quick, right here under this calendar, this is called our weekly webinar calendar. We do these webinars for Nadex every Monday night at 7 p.m. Eastern time, as you can see here. You're welcome to join us on those. We do some radio shows and some other things during the week. and. Uh, some other webinars, feel free to join us on those. Uh, let me just make a note of something here. Update on this calendar, it's just a little reminder for myself, okay? And so take advantage of that. Oh, also right there on that calendar, my bad, that's what I was gonna show you. If you scroll down to this week, you'll see right here, this week on the calendar right here, you can get access to the Nadex holiday schedule right there as well and also right here, general market hours for all the different exchanges, CME, ICE, uh, New York Stock Exchange, NASDAQ, all of their complete holiday schedule listing all in one place there. That way you're not having to, depend on what you trade, that way you're not having to run all over the place and look online everywhere trying to find that info. We tried to put it right there for you. Um, easy to access, okay? Uh, some other great information right up here at the top, under binary essentials, there's some good information here about different ways we trade Nadex binaries and spreads. You can go right here to the third option, some step-by-step -step training courses here that you can go through. Uh, where I really wanna draw you to right now is right here under the questions tab. The second one down, trading questions forum, okay? This is our trading 
This is our forum here. We've got a lot of good information here. It's broken down into different sections. You'll see right here, S1, S2, kind of section one, section two. Great information about trading psychology, risk management. But if you scroll on down here to S10, to section 10, it's again, it's all of our different trading systems that we use to trade binaries and spreads. You can go through and watch step-by-step -step videos, screenshots, listed out step-by-step -step rules some kind of back and forth conversation between other traders, how they're, how they're doing, what they're doing, how they're using the systems. But if you scroll down a little bit further, you'll see right here, watch webinars here. This webinar we're doing tonight, I am recording it. I'll have it up and post it up here in about an hour after the webinar is done. You'll be able to find it right here under newest webinars. So if you do wanna rewatch this webinar, it'll be listed right here under newest webinars, as well as you can go back and catch up on any other webinars. Like I said, we do these every Monday night. You can kind of see that here, Monday Nadex webinars and the dates. You can catch up on anything you might have missed. Tonight, we're gonna to be talking about the misconceptions of Nadex spreads. I'm going to just very briefly review some of the basics. Uh, we're not gonna get in depth into that. So if you're new to Nadex spreads or you missed our webinar a couple weeks ago, um, you can all go back, always go back and catch up right here on the basics of Nadex spreads. If you feel like you need to get a little better handle on kind of spreads 101 to be able to incorporate that into what we're going to review tonight. Okay. Also in that same section here, you'll see there's just a whole library and wealth of information here. Literally hundreds of hours of education, Nadex binary webinars, Nadex spread webinars, getting started with Nadex. Nadex platform tutorials, teaching you how to use the Nadex platform, how to enter and exit orders, how to place take profit orders, and so on. But for example, if you just click right here, tonight we're talking about spreads, you click spread webinars, right here, picking the right spread, the basics of spreads, the ins and outs of spreads, directional trading, um, trading iron condors, all kind of great information about how to trade Nadex binaries or spreads. And all totally free for you to take advantage of there. So get yourself a free demo account with Nadex, hop on over to apexinvesting.com, get a free username and password, take advantage of that free education. Uh, while you're at it, hit us up over at facebook.com slash apexinvesting. Like us, on, like us and follow us on Facebook. We're always posting some great information about new strategies, new systems, swing breakouts, any new webinars coming up, great posts and trades from our trade room. All kind of good stuff here that uh, you'll get notified of if you like us on Facebook. Very easy to keep up with anything new or any upcoming new events or webinars that you might want to take advantage of. Okay, so let's move forward here. I see we've already got a couple of questions coming in about some spreads. Uh, it looks like, yep, Mike, I'm going to address that um, a whole section for that tonight. So, yep, I'll get that cleared up for you. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Jimmy, your question on binaries. We're, we're talking about spreads tonight, but if you go to the website there that I just showed you, apexinvesting.com, and check out uh, some of those tabs I showed where we um, got some good information about binaries uh, right here. Let me just pull it back up and answer Jimmy's question real quick. Uh, right here, binary essentials. Check out that tab and some of this information here. This will go through showing you some of the step-by-step -step courses, some of the software and indicators and charts and stuff like that that we use. Might help uh, answer that question there for you, okay? So, common misconceptions with spreads, how to pick the right spread, understanding spread premium and pricing, how the value of a spread works, and we're talk a little bit about binaries versus spreads and risk and reward. Okay, so a lot of you say, hey, I think I understand the basics of spreads, but sometimes I get into a spread, it doesn't quite move as much as I think it would, or I didn't quite make as much as I thought I would, what am I doing wrong? Well, if you were with us last week, we we're talking about binaries. We talked a lot about picking the right binary, right? How there's different binaries out there. There's, you know, some that are out of the money, at the money, in the money, different pricing, and a lot of times people like to go for the real cheap ones, right? The out of the money that are low risk. We talked about how those are not always the highest probability of being profitable without huge moves, right? Mike, you were on with us last week, Mike, I believe, right? And we talked about how sometimes just randomly picking one or picking one because we like the price or the risk 
isn't always the right one to pick, okay? Um, and we're gonna talk about that same type of concept tonight a little bit with spreads, okay? Uh, Emmanuel, we are gonna cover proximity and premium just a little bit tonight. Uh, we don't have a lot of time tonight, so we're not gonna get crazy in depth into those, but we are gonna cover them. But if you have more questions on that, Emmanuel, the best place, and I want everybody to see this too, I'm gonna kinda cover the basics tonight of picking the right spread and understanding, but I wanna show you where you can get in-depth information. I'm gonna point to this again at the end. When you're in our forum, remember I showed you this watch webinars here, Nadex spread webinars, right here, this one called the ins and outs of Nadex spreads, okay? This goes through and breaks down spreads very, very simply. After you watch all of this, you should be able to start trading spreads right away. We have a whole section on proximity and a whole section on premium. Okay, now I'm gonna cover those briefly tonight, but if you wanna see some more in-depth information about those, that's where I would direct you to right there, okay? So, um, all right, so let's get going here. Real quick, I just wanna do a quick kind of five minute review here to make sure everybody's on the same page. What is a spread? What is a Nadex spread? Well, a Nadex spread has a ceiling and a floor. Basically think of it as a top and a bottom. Okay, if you were looking at a chart, you'd kind of draw a box on the chart. So, for example, a euro dollar example, let's say the floor is at 1.2400, that's the bottom. The ceiling's at 1.2500, that's the top. So the spread is the difference between the floor and the ceiling, okay? So this particular spread is 100 pips wide, all right? Spreads move in pips or ticks, the last digit quoted, each pip is worth $1. There are 100 pips in this particular spread. So, for example, let's say that we're gonna sell a spread. That means our strategy, our system, our charts, our indicator, whatever it is we're using, okay, is telling us the market's going down, we want to sell. Well, if I'm gonna sell, saying the market's going down, now let's say that I'm correct, the market does go down. I can't make additional money below this floor. Okay, if I'm wrong and the market goes up, I can't lose additional money above the ceiling. So I have capped risk and capped reward. Okay, I know exactly what my potential profit could be and exactly what my potential risk or loss could be going into it. So as a quick example, let's just say that I sold right here at 2490, saying the market's going down. Well, the ceiling's 2500. So if I'm wrong and the market goes up, okay? Say it doesn't go down. Let's say I'm wrong and it goes up. What's the most that I can lose? Well, the ceiling's 2,500. I sold right here at 2,490. So that difference is 10 pips. From here to here, it's just 10 pips. That's the most that I can lose. That's my maximum risk, okay? I can't lose. If I'm wrong, if I think the market's going down, but I'm wrong and it flies up, 300 points against me, doesn't matter. The most I can lose, most I'm risking is to the ceiling, 10 ticks. So each pip is worth a dollar, so there are 10 pips. So the cost to enter this trade and the max risk would be $10, okay? Now, from 2490 all the way down to the floor of 2400 is a difference of 90 pips. There's 90 pips of potential profit, each pip is worth a dollar, so I could potentially profit $90. And again, if it comes all the way down and keeps going, doesn't matter. I'm, I can only make money to the floor. Okay. So, all right. If we're buying, it's the same thing, but just the opposite. I can't make money. If I'm buying, I'm saying the market's going up. I can't make additional money above the ceiling and I can't lose additional money below the floor. So if I was to buy right here at 2410, saying the market's going up, but instead the market goes down, doesn't matter how far down against me goes, doesn't matter how wrong I am, I can only lose money down to the floor, okay? Because the floor is 2,400, I'm buying at 2,410, that's 10 pips of risk there. Again, each pip is worth a dollar. What is my potential reward? If I'm right and the market goes up, well, I bought right here at 2,410, I can make money all the way up to 2,500, 
So that difference is 90 pips. And again, each pip is worth a dollar. So my potential profit is $90. Now, spreads are just like binaries. They open up at a certain time and they expire at a certain time. Okay, but I can close out, I can get out early any time before expiration. So if I were to buy right here and I wanted to wait till it got, if I bought right here at 24.10 and the market got up here to 24.60, I could just get out and take whatever profit I want there, right? Or if I bought right here, thinking the market's going up, but instead it goes down, I don't have to take the full loss all the way down to the floor. I can get out early. Okay, I can get out anytime I want. All right, buy or sell and get out anytime I want. Now, if I hold it all the way until expiration, when the spread expires, it will close at the settlement price at the time of expiration. So, for example, if I bought right here at 24.10, yes, it got all the way up here to the ceiling. But I, if I didn't close it out then and I just left it open and it expired right here at, say, 24.90, then at expiration, what I'm going to get is the difference of where I bought in compared to where it expired. All right, and the settlement price is based on the underlying market, the indicative Nadex price. Okay, and as we know, there's all kind of different expirations and different time frames. There's all kind of different spreads out there to choose from. Okay, we've covered that last time, and like I said, if you need to catch up on that, I'll show you again where you can. Look at that uh, video we did a couple weeks ago on the basics of spreads. I just did a very quick run through right there. Uh, I can show you where you can watch a complete webinar just based on that, okay? Any any general questions on the basics of a spread there? It looks like we've got a few already. Let me just catch up here and let me know if you have any more. Um, uh, DJ, what's the quickest way to find spreads that are near the floor or ceiling. We're going to talk about that here in just a second. Are we discussing how to pick a winning trade? Like how, no, William, we're not talking about strategies and systems tonight. We're, we're just talking about how to pick the right one. So you know, based on whatever strategy or system you're using, which spread is going to be better to choose for that. But we're not talking about different strategies tonight. Um, yeah, I'll show you again where to find that video there. Um, <clears throat> Let's see here, Bill, if the indicative goes below the floor, the bid offer spread makes it harder to make the full amount. Uh, well, if it's going, if it's out above it, Bill, okay, you can get out at whatever the bid or offer is at the time, but if you hold it till expiration, you'll get the full complete payout. I mean, because at expiration, if the indicative is above the floor or below the ceiling, okay, and you can only make money to the floor or ceiling, it will expire. When it expires, you'll get the payout all the way to the floor or ceiling there. Okay. Um, let's see here. Mike, since the spreads incur bid ask spread costs, what is the ideal time frame that beats the bid ask and still generates move within the contract period? It's kind of the same uh, answer I just gave to, I believe, William. Yeah, with anything, you're going to have a bid ask spread. Okay. Now, to avoid bid-ask spread, you just have to hold something till expiration. If it expires, you get that full payout. You're not having to pay bid-ask spread because you're not, you know, you didn't buy something then selling out of it. Or you didn't sell something and having to buy it back. But the only way to avoid bid-ask spread is to hold something till it expires. Same with the binary or any option out there in the world or spreads, okay, um, or Nadex spreads. So the only way to get out of something and not pay the bid ask spread is to hold it to expiration. Okay, or there's certain things with Nadex have very very small bid ask spreads, just a couple of ticks, you know, a couple of bucks. It's not not that big a deal really. Um, but you know, especially when you're looking at bigger moves in the market, you know, a few dollars bid ask spread is is not that big a deal. But to totally avoid it, the only way to do that is hold it to expiration. Okay, so. For some of you that trade both binaries and spreads, just want to make sure that, you know, at times we do compare binaries to spreads with certain aspects, but they're very different. And I want to make sure that you understand that. Binaries are yes or no, true or false. 
one tick is the difference between winning the trade or losing the trade. It all comes down to that one tick. You can buy a binary for 80 bucks and at expiration, if you're one tick off, right? And that determines your whole win or loss, you could lose that whole 80 bucks, right? That's how binaries work. So what are some of the benefits of spreads versus binaries? Well, first of all, you cannot think like a binary trader. You cannot think all or nothing based on one tick or one tenth of a tick, okay? Binaries are a dollar a tick, okay? So I know binaries are the buzz and they're very exciting. They're easy to understand. They're a little harder to trade. Spreads are a little harder to understand up front, but once you get them, they're very easy to trade. And I'm not slamming binaries. We trade them every day. I talk about them all the time. I teach them all the time. Just you have to understand the difference and because they're very, very different, okay? And I always suggest that most beginners, uh, even intermediate or anybody with a smaller account, start with spreads over binaries personally, okay? And one of the things we wanna talk about here, and I'm gonna show you some examples of this, a lot of people are scared away of spreads due to max risk, okay? Just because a spread might say, hey, I've got a $200 max risk, I don't wanna do that. Let me show you what I mean. Let's pull up the platform here real quick, okay? If we were to come over here and we were to look at some spreads, let's just go right now to Forex. Let's look at the Euro dollar. Uh, no, I'm on binaries. Let's go to spreads. Let's go to Euro dollar. Let's just look at this spread right here real quick, okay? So let's say that whatever our strategy or system is, the charts and indicators we're using, we think the market's going up. So we want to buy, and we're gonna buy this spread. Oh man, max loss 135 bucks, max profit 150. This right here scares you, right? That freaks you out right there. Because you are used to trading binaries, and you like to go over here and pull up some binary that you can pull up and say, okay, I just want to buy this binary and, ooh, max loss 27. I like that a lot better, okay? Well, first of all, you can't be scared away by that. Most people say, I don't want to trade those spreads. It's, it's too risky. And that's absolutely 100% false and completely 100% wrong. And in fact, spreads are a lot less riskier than binaries. Okay, let's talk about this. If I were to buy this right here, okay, what is this spread? Well, the floor is 0845 and the ceiling is 1095. Well, I can buy it at 0981. So the difference of the floor to where I'm buying is my maximum risk, right? So that is the amount since that's my max risk, that I'm gonna to have to put up as margin out of my account to enter that trade, okay? Anytime you do a trade, wherever you're buying, the amount of money you're gonna to have to put up to get in that trade is gonna be the difference of the floor compared to where you're buying. If I'm gonna sell it, okay, what do I have to put up? Well, the difference of the ceiling compared to where I'm selling, right? just like we've talked about, just like we showed here, okay? Now, does that mean like a binary? So what freaks you out is you see, oh man, I gotta put up 136 bucks, but I'm used to trading binaries, and if that binary just expires one tick below my strike, I lose the whole thing. I lose everything that it says right here with the binary, right? Because the binary goes against you by one tick. Well. What if you bought it right here at 0981 and it expired and you bought it saying it's going up, but what if you were wrong and it expired one tick below that? What if it expired at 0980? Well, on a binary, you'd lose the whole thing, right? What would you lose on this spread? If you bought it at 0981 and it expired at 0980, it went a tick against you. What would you lose? Yeah, you lose one dollar. One dollar. So everybody gets freaked out because of this right here. Now granted, yes, sometimes if you trade certain spreads, 
you might have to put up a little more money to get into the spread, okay? But just because you put up that much money doesn't mean that's your real risk. For me to lose this whole $136, how far against me does the market have to go? How wrong do I have to be? The market's got to go against me 136 points on the euro dollar, right? Where's the euro dollar right now? Euro dollar is right here. 0979. Okay. How far down does that euro dollar have to go? It's not even shown on the chart how far down it's got to go. Do you see that? Euro dollar going back how the euro dollar, if I got in right here, it'd have to go um way, 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 way down here. See, and this has been days of the euro dollar. For me to lose that, it's got to go all the way down here. Do you think I'm going to stay in that trade and watch the euro dollar go way down here? Like, I can't even see that far down on my chart. I've got to scroll the chart just to get how far down it would be. Does that make sense? No. If I get into this trade, into the euro dollar, to buy it, saying the market's going up, and it starts to go down against me, let's say it goes down against me 20 or 30 points, right? All the way down like here. I'm gonna probably just get out and say, hey, I was wrong. It's not going up, it's going down, right? Does that make sense to everybody? If it's going and it comes way down here, I'm gonna be like, yeah, that's probably wrong. Get out, right? So, I had to put up 136 bucks to get in this trade. It goes against me by 30 bucks, by 30 pips. I just get out of it. And how much did I lose? 30 bucks, right? Or 36 bucks, right? Okay. If I were to go and buy this binary right here, and I'm gonna buy this binary right here for $74. When I buy this binary, I'm saying the market's gonna be above 0.975, okay? Well, let's look, where is 0.975? Right here. What happens if the market comes down just a little bit and it expires at 0974. One tick. One tick. How much do I lose? All $74, right? At expiration. Everything. Based on one tick. The spread went against me 30 ticks, and I only lost 30 bucks. Okay, does, there, does everybody see that? Does everybody get where I'm where I'm coming from there? Okay, so should you should you really be that scared or concerned when you want to get into a spread and you see that getting into that spread you got to put up 136 bucks? Is that really your realistic loss amount? No, that's that's the margin you gotta put up to get in the trade. And it can go against you to lose, on this trade here, to lose the same amount you would lose on the binary, it have to go against you 75 ticks from where it is now. It'd have to come all the way down here. It hasn't been at that level in days, right? You'd have to do that in the next couple hours, okay? And anytime you get into a trade, whatever you decide you're going to risk on that trade, if it goes against you by that, you just get out, okay? Does that make sense? All right, 
Mike, you can't do stops on on NADEX. You just have to ex. You can't do them. You you can't preset them. You just have to get out. Okay. I mean, if you if I were to place this trade right here and buy this spread, I buy it and it's there. It's in my working orders. I bought it. See, plus one means I bought. If I'd sold it, it would say negative one. Okay. So I bought this spread. Right now. See, it's this spread that I bought. Right now, what can I sell it for? Well, the offer side is what I can buy for. The bid side is what I can sell for. See that? So right here, I bought it. What did I buy it at? 0982. What can I sell it for right now? 0978. See, right here, 0978. So the difference of where I bought compared to what I can sell for right now is what? negative four dollars difference that makes sense okay so if i want to get out of this let's say that it's going against me and it's gone down 25 30 ticks and i just want to get out or let's say that it's going for me and it's up 30 or 40 dollars and i want to get out well if i bought it the way i get out of it is to sell it right so all i got to do is just click it it automatically opens a ticket marked sell and i sell it and the contract's gone, okay? And I, the money I had to put up for the trade all goes back into my account, plus or minus what I made or lost, okay? Does that make sense? Okay, so do you understand what I'm trying, the point I'm trying to make here is you can't get all wrapped up. This is very different from binaries. This is not all or nothing based on one tick. So you can't get wrapped up in freaking out by this number here. You're not paying attention to this number here as your risk. You're just looking at this number here to know how much you need to get into that trade. All right, whatever strategy or system you're using should tell you, if I think the market's going up, great. But if it goes down against me, 20, 30, 40, whatever it is, you're, whatever you set your stop at, then you're gonna get out. Okay, it's a dollar a tick. It's not one tick being all or nothing. Does that make sense? Any any questions on just that part right there? I want to make sure everybody really understands that because that's really the first that's really the first misconception that people have uh, when it comes to spreads is they open a ticket and they see that and they think, oh, it, it's a psychological thing because it says max loss 137. And so what do you say? Oh, I don't want to do that. Let me go buy some cheapy binary. You know what I mean? Uh, Susan, yeah. So if you do two, then it's 274. If you do three, then it's 441. Okay. So it wouldn't be, uh, yeah, 137 for one or two. Yep. Because all you have, all you have to put up for one spread is the difference of where's the floor compared to where I'm buying in. And that's the that's the amount you actually have to put up. If I said, oh, I want to do 10 spreads, I'm going to be 1370. One spread, 137. You see that? If I do 10, it's 1370. If I do one, it's 137. Okay. So um, Jimmy, how do you figure your profit? Well, your profit's going to go, your profit's going to be based on where the market moves. I mean, if I were to buy in right now at what, 0983, here's the Euro dollar. Let me add something to this chart real quick here. Um, shortcut, there we go. Okay, um, so what was it? I'm sorry, 0983, right, on the Euro dollar. So if I was to buy in right now at 0983, okay, so I could buy in right here. That's where I can buy in right now. So my profit is just going to be if the market kept going up, just every ticket goes up past where I bought in is a dollar. I mean, it might go up not at all. It might go up three ticks. It might go up 30 ticks. Okay. Just depends on how far the market goes up. And then how far has it gone up when I decide to get out? Or how far has it gone up when this spread expires at 11 p.m.? 
Okay. So yes, John, that would be considered premium. Mm -hmm. And we'll talk about that here in just a second. Right. See right now the indicatives at 0980, I can buy at 0983. Okay. So that's three ticks, three bucks premium. Okay. We're going to talk a little bit about that so that it makes sense. Okay. So that's the first misconception is risk and reward. Okay. But Jimmy, let's look at something. So just while we got it, so we, can, we can see it on a chart. I mean, I know everybody likes these, you know, the PowerPoints, but I, I think it's a lot easier to visually understand this and see this on a chart. So if I buy right here, okay, can everybody see this pointer? I got rid of that crosshair. Can everybody see the pointer here? Okay. Perfect, Marsha. Marsha says, you got my attention. Thanks for pointing that out. I won't let the loss freak me out. Think I'm going to like spread trading. Absolutely, Martha and Marsha. And look, so whatever system or strategy you're trading, let's say that it's telling you, hey, your dollar is going up. Okay. So you can buy in a spread right here, right? Well, you had to put up out of your account, you had to put up 137 bucks just to enter the trade. And then what happens? Well, you got in at 0983. And let's say that the market comes, well, let's look, just look at today. This is all today. Let's look at the time frames down here. See this? This is all the way from this morning. 747 this morning. I'm going to put the uh, crosshair back on. This, there's, this was the low point of the day right here, or, or I'm the low point of the morning. This is at 842 a.m., right? See that? Then the market came up, kind of jiggled around, came all the way down. This right here was the low of the day. At what time? 10.46 a.m., right? Then the market came all the way back up, kind of came down, jiggled around. Now it's coming up. So let's just say you, your strategy or system telling you, hey, it's going up, all right? European markets were closed earlier today. They're, they're going to open up later tonight, whatever. I think it's going up. Hey, so I get in the trade right here at 0983. I put up 137 bucks. My strategy tells me the market's going up, but I'm wrong. And it comes all the way back down. Like I'm so wrong that it comes all the way back down to the low of the day at what? 0957. Like I was so wrong, it went all the way back to the low of the day, right? Well, from where I bought right here at 0983, thinking it's going to go up, and I'm so wrong, it went all the way back down to even the low of the day to 0957. How much am I down? $27, $27 to be wrong and it go all the way to the low of the day. I put up 137, I close it out early, I'm going to get back what? 127 minus the fees of like 90 cents both ways and your a couple dollars bid ass spread, right? which is what? It's really that much? Five bucks. See, I can buy for eight, two, I can sell for six, five bucks. Is that really a huge loss? What if I have a binary strike right here that I bought and the market, and I bought it for 70 bucks or, or whatever. Let's say I bought a binary right here so I buy a binary right here, saying the market would be above this, and the market comes down and expires one tick. I lose the whole 80 bucks on that binary, right? Just from the market coming from here to here, just that little bit, I could lose the whole 80 bucks on a binary. Or I can let it go from here way 
down to the low of the day and lose what? 30 bucks on a spread. Right? Does everybody follow that right there? I hope everybody's getting this like Marsha does of, oh, light bulb just went off. Gotcha. Just because I have to put up that much doesn't mean I'm going to lose that much. Okay? Now, other quick example here. Let's look at the opposite side of something. Okay? Um, well, real quick, Marsha says, I, uh, I've i been encouraged to take overnight trades. What is your take on overnight spread trades? Uh, Marsha, I love overnight spread trades. Okay? Love them. And here's why. A couple of reasons why. Because you've got tons of options. Just look right now at the euro dollar. We have spreads that open up at 6 p.m., and they go until 11 p.m. We've got a five hour, we got five hour spreads that are 250 points wide. You see that? And I got three different ones to choose from. I've got spreads opening up every hour on the hour that go for two hours. I got a six to eight, I got a seven to nine. Here at eight o'clock, I'll have a new one that's eight to 10. Then I've got a daily that goes all the way to 3 p.m. tomorrow, okay? And then after 11 o'clock, I'm going to have some new ones that are like 11 to, oh, 3 or 11 to 4, I believe. But also, look at what I'm looking at here. Forex spreads. Aussie dollar, euro yen, euro dollar, pound yen, pound dollar, dollar yen. Right now, Marsha, it's 744 Eastern time. Well, all of the U.S. markets are basically closed, right? The, like the big the stock indices and all that. There's not much going on. But right now, what's open right now or opening right now on the other side of the world? Australia and Japan, right? So you can get some pretty good, decent moves sometimes when the Australian market. Okay, just like here in the U.S. for the New York session. When is normally the biggest moves? Well, in the morning, right? From like 9 to 11 or 9 to 12, those first few hours of trading where news is coming out and everything's going on and a bunch of people are trading and the big institutions are trading, that's normally when we get the most movement, you know? So early evening, say from 7 p.m. to 10 or 11 p.m. Eastern time, you can get some pretty decent moves going on, especially on, on what? Well, what's open? Australia. What's the first one right here? Aussie dollar. Click Aussie dollar, same thing. 6 to 11 p.m. spreads. The new ones every hour and the dailies. Okay? Um, we've also got dollar yen. The yen for, you know, the Jap for Japan. Great spreads there. Especially when there's big news that comes out that affects the Aussie dollar and the euro and the dollar yen or, or the dollar yen, it's also going to affect these others, whether it's euro dollar or euro yen, you can, you can get some movement. Okay. Then what happens in the middle of the night, say around 3 a.m.? Well, Japan and Australia are kind of coming down to a close there, but then what opens up at 3? All of Europe, right? All of Europe starts to open up. All the European markets, which is what? Euro, euro, pound, pound. Like, and you've got these spreads all night. So, yeah, if you're a nighttime trader, an overnight trader, you definitely have some good stuff to choose from there. Yeah, you can trade binaries and you can trade the five minute binaries as well. You know, they've got those on Aussie dollar, euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar yen on some good stuff that moves overnight. But you've got great options with your spreads, okay, all night long. Now, and we'll talk about this a little bit, but it all depends on what your particular strategy or system is, okay? Are you, whatever strategy or system and charts and indicators you look at, are you looking at short-term trends, you know? Like, are you looking at like a one-minute chart or like a five-minute chart and you're looking for like, shorter term moves, kind of what's going on in the market right now. You know, where's the market headed right now or in the next hour or two, like 
what's the immediate trend of the market, okay? Well, if that's your strategy or system, Marsha, you know, then you might be looking at these 6 to 11 p.m. spreads or like the 7 to 9, you know, something that's happened in the next hour or two to get into right now, okay? What if your strategy, or well, let me back that up. If you're a very short term, then you may only be looking at like this seven to nine. Hey, we've still got an hour and 10 minutes here. All right, so I just I just need one of these spreads. They're 100 points wide, okay? Well, this my strategy system might take a few hours. Okay, well then maybe you don't want just this 9 p.m. spread. You want a little longer time to be right. So you may go with this spread that goes to 11 p.m., gives you another three hours. Now granted, this is a wider spread, right? It's 250 points wide. So if you were to take the middle spread here and buy, okay, about 140 bucks. All right, still it's not too bad. You're not putting up a whole lot. Well, hey, my strategy is longer term. I look at like hourly bars and stuff like that, okay? So I want a little bit longer time frame. Well, there's a daily spread right here that goes all the way till three o'clock tomorrow afternoon, okay? And it's a 600 point wide spread. This is a huge spread, okay? Huge spread. So granted, it's gonna cost a little bit more to get into, right? Why? Well, because there's a bigger difference between the floor and where you're buying because it's a much wider spread. So yeah, it's gonna cost a little more to get into, okay? But it's a little bit longer term, okay? So it all depends, and Mike, like you're asking overnight, it all depends on what your strategy or system is. I mean, if you're getting into a trade at six o'clock and you only need five hours on your trade, you know, because you're looking at shorter term bars or shorter term trends, five hours is a long time. Now, when this expires at 11, a new one's going to open up that goes like 11 to 4 or 11 to 7 or something. What is it? Let's see here. Um, on that one, markets, Forex, and contract specs. Let's see here. Binary spreads. All right, spreads, euro dollar. Okay. So we've got, yeah. We've got 11 p.m. Eight hour, five hours, five hours, seven. Okay, so yeah, we'll have another one that opens at 11 p.m. and goes for four hours. Okay, and then we'll have another one that opens another, or, or five hours, I'm sorry. So that's a new one every five hours. Okay, and then in the morning, you'll still be able to get into this daily one, but then you also have another one that's an eight hour spread that goes from like 8 a.m. to 3 p.m., okay? So, I mean, you'll have, you always have a ton of different spreads. You always have your new hourlies, you'll have your four hour, or you've always got all the way out to tomorrow, okay? Or 11, no, wait a minute, seven, six to 11, and then it's, I'm sorry, it's eight hour, right? The first one's five hours, six to 11, then the next one is seven hours, 11 to seven. So you've got, at 11 p.m. tonight, you'll have a seven hour spread that opens up, in addition to more two hour spreads and your daily. So there's always plenty to choose from, whether you're looking at a short term strategy, a four or five hour strategy, or all the way to tomorrow at three o'clock. Okay. Um, Bill, yeah, there's always great um, iron condor spreads overnight as well. Absolutely. And we highlight a lot of those on like our news calendar there that you can check out. Tons of stuff there. Uh, let's see here, Mike, on your overnight trades, you usually pick to expire as go all the way to the next morning when you can check it again or let it expire while you sleep. It all depends, Mike, it, it depends on what we're doing. Like if I'm doing like an iron condor, I usually let it expire. Um, I personally don't like to, myself, I personally don't like to go to sleep and leave trades open unless it's a real low risk trade, personally. Um, but if it's like a real low risk trade, like for example, you know, you can go in here and like on this one, seven to nine, 
I've been showing you this middle one. Like if I want to buy this middle one, I got to put up 64 bucks on this one. Okay. But if I want to buy this top one, I only got to put up 14 bucks. So if I were to buy this one, I'm not really worried about staying up for a stop loss. Like if it goes against me more than 14 ticks, I, okay, oh well, right? But what if it goes up and it goes up 30 ticks? Well, it only costs me 14 bucks to get into it. So if I'm wrong and it goes against me, I lose 14 bucks. Okay, but if it goes up in the middle of the night or, or between now and nine, and I, I wanna be able to get out of it, right? And make some money. So if I bought it at 0984, and let's say I want to make, I'm risking 14 bucks. Let's say I want to make 30 bucks on it, for example. So to make 30 bucks, if I bought it at 0984, I got to get out of it at what? To make 30 bucks. 914, right? So the markets, if I want to sell it at, um, oh, I'm sorry, at 0014, right? So I would click it, and instead of just saying sell, I would have to change this to 0014, okay? Um, or 10, oh, I'm sorry, 10, oh. my bad. And I just put place order, okay? So I put my order to sell it 30 ticks above where I bought it. Okay, so that way if the market gets up there, it automatically execute that order and get me out for profit. Okay, uh, Mike, so 11 p.m. we get a new eight hour spread that will reach till 7 a.m. That's correct. Instead of having to get the whole day and it's related higher risk. Yeah, that's true. So at 11 a.m. or 11 p.m., you'll get another one of these type of spreads here. They're like 250 wide as opposed to the big daily that's 600 wide. So yes, you'll have an eight hour spread there that will require a little bit less margin because it's smaller. It's not as big, okay? Uh, let's see here. All right, I think we got most of our questions answered there. Okay, well I just wanted to clear that up for you because that's the first misconception is trading spreads is too risky. It's, it, it's too much risk because I got to put up so much more. Yes, you have to put up a little more out of your account, but in reality, is trading a spread more risky? Are you really risking more trading a spread compared to a binary? Or technically, can a binary be a lot bigger risk? Yeah, a binary could technically be a lot bigger risk, right? Now, let's look at the flip side of something here, okay? Because I don't want to avoid the obvious. If I were to buy this binary right here for 80 bucks, just saying that the market had to stay above this level, and the market just didn't do much of anything, it just stayed right here, this binary would win, right? And I'd make 20 bucks on the binary. Not bad. Well, what if I, oh, right, everybody understand that? So yes, if I bought this binary and the market went one tick below it, I'd lose 80 bucks. But if it stayed one tick above it, I'd make 20 bucks. So from the binary aspect, one tick, I can make 20 bucks. That's cool. If I bought a spread right here and it went up one tick, what would I make on my spread? Only one dollar. So when I show that example, some of you are like, oh man, I hate spreads. I don't make any money on spreads. On one tick, I can make 20 bucks on this binary. But on one tick, I only made one dollar on the spread. I like binaries better. I'll give you that. There is a sense that with just a couple of a tick move, yes, you can technically make more on a binary with just a couple of ticks move. Yes. 
a binary move in two or three ticks in your favor, I mean, if you let's say you buy a binary for 50 bucks and it moves two or three ticks in your favor, hey, you might make 50 bucks and you only made two or three bucks on a spread. I'll give you that. But that one tick against you and you lose 80 or 50, that adds up pretty quick, doesn't it? Right? Okay. So I'll give you that. Yes. A couple of ticks move on a binary might make you a lot more than a spread will when a few ticks. But let's look. Let's say that I think the market's going up. Okay. Well, say I bought this binary for 80 bucks. The market went up. I made 20 bucks. Awesome. But what happens if I was right and the market did go up? And let's say the market went up 100 ticks. How much would I make on my spread when that market goes up 100 ticks? Just as an example. Let's just say it went up 60 ticks. Yeah, if it went up 100 ticks, I'd make 100 bucks on the spread. What if it went up 50 ticks? I'd make 50 bucks on the spread. Because I was right, right? The reason I bought that spread was I thought the market was going up. I was right, and the market went up 50, 60, 100 ticks. So I made 50, 60, 100 bucks. So I was right, the market went up. How much did I make on the binary? No matter how right I was, I still, if I bought it for 80 bucks, I can still only make 20 bucks on that binary, right? Because I bought it for 80, the most it could be worth is 100, whether I'm one tick right or 100 ticks right. Correct? Yeah, Paul, you can only make it up to the floor you can only make money up to the ceiling, okay? But let's look. Which one were we looking at right here? We're looking at this one right here, right? So if I bought this one, I can buy it at 0984. Where's the ceiling? 1095. So what can I possibly make? 111 bucks. If I buy an $80 binary, the most it can expire for being worth is 100. So whether the market went up 40, 60, 80, 100, I can make money all the way up to 109.5. Did I confuse people with what I'm trying to say here, or does that make sense? Of Yes, just a few ticks in your direction, yeah. You might make 20 bucks on a binary, but only make a few dollars on a spread. But with a big move in your direction, you can make quite a bit more money with a spread where you're only capped at 100 bucks on a binary. So it does go both ways. There's some pros and cons there, right? There really is. But one tick against you, boom, the whole binary is gone. 80 bucks. By one tick. The spread have to go against you 80 ticks to do the same thing. Okay? Does that make sense? Everybody follow me? Any questions on this? We can move on. I know we're kind of harping on this, but I think this is a big issue with people that a lot of people don't get. Okay? All right. I'm going to delete everything off of this. Um, drawing tools. Remove. I know I haven't really been following my, uh, um, yeah, Stephen, exactly. Once you get your mindset out of binaries, it's so much easier to understand spreads. And that's where I was kind of going here on our PowerPoint of don't think like a binary trader because these are not binaries. This is not all or nothing, okay? I mean, and yes, you don't have to take a full loss on a binary. You can exit it early. Now, I'm just talking about till expiration. But even if you exit it early, let's just look at just a quick example here. If I bought a binary right here for 80 bucks and the market came down and hit that strike, so I got out of it at about 50 bucks, right? 
I'd only lose 30 bucks. The spread still would have to go all the way past down here for me to lose that same 30 bucks. Okay. Uh, let's see here. All right, Emmanuel, I get confused with the indicative index. Is it the same as the floor or the underlying market? Okay. The indicative index. If you're on Nadex right here, see indicative index? It's right here. This is where the market is right now. Okay. That's not the floor. That's not the ceiling. That's where the market is right now. Okay. On this, these spreads, this is the floor. This is the ceiling. On this spread, this is the floor. This is the ceiling. Top, top, bottom, top, bottom. Okay. All right. This is just where the market is right now. Let me put it, Manuel, let me put it in a different uh, scenario here. See this right here? Here's the spread. 845 to 1095, right? Actually, let me, let me do a different one to make it easier. This one right here. All right. Let's look at this spread right here. 920 to 1020. So 920 is what? Floor. 1020 is ceiling, okay? So, uh, remove it, okay. All right, so, um, let me get that off of there, hold on. I'm going to squish this chart. Okay. So, 1020 is right here. You see that price? 1020. And then all the way down here at the bottom is 920. When you think about spreads, think of a spread as a box. Okay, that's all it is is a box. A spread is a box. Okay, so let's just look. What is this particular spread? What's the bottom? 920, the top is 1020. Right? See, 920, the bottom of the box, 1020, top of the box. So you got a box, you got a top got a bottom and where's the market right now within the box is that clarified a little bit Emmanuel you got your bottom which is the floor you got your top which is the ceiling the indicative is just where it's at right now the indicative is where's the market at right now the market might come up it might come down it can be all the, the market can go up and down within this box okay so that's the spread, top and bottom. The indicative is right where it is. Where, where's the market at now? And when you're looking at like the Nadex platform, the indicative's listed right there, okay? Now, yes, sometimes when you're looking at the indicative, say right now this says 0981, this chart says 0982. There might be a, a, a tick or two difference because the way Nadex figures their indicative, okay, is they're basically, for example, taking like, it works differently with Forex compared to, like they figure it all differently, but in a nutshell, imagine they take the last 20 trades, okay, or last 25 trades, all right, or 25 transactions, they, they get rid of the top five highest ones, the lowest five bottom ones, and they average the middle. That way you're not caught in some quick spike. Okay, so the indicative might at times be a tick or two different than what you might see on a random chart. Okay, but everything is determined by the indicative. That is where the market is right now. Okay, so that is a spread though. All right, top, bottom, and indicative. So let's look at something else then. 
All right, and I, I'm getting way off track here from my uh, <laughs> from my PowerPoint, but I honestly think this is a much better use of our time. Is this is this more helpful for you guys to see the actual um, exchange, or for me to show you stuff on an actual chart? Is that a lot more helpful than just cool little PowerPoint figures? <laughs> okay. I like my PowerPoint, but sometimes it's just so much easier to show you. I know for me, I was like, show me visually. I, I want to see it. So this is taking us a little more time, but I think it's helpful. Okay. So, all right. So right here, this is, we understand risk reward. Okay. So let's talk about. And we understand that each tick is a dollar. Okay. When I say each tick, I want everybody to listen close to this and try to follow me. When I say each tick is a dollar, what I mean by that is this. I mean that right now, if I were to buy right here at 982, Let me back up. What I mean by that is this. If I were to open this, I can buy right now at what? 0985, right? That's where I can buy this particular spread. This spread here, I can buy this one at 0986, this one 0985, this one, well, there's no quotes. That would have been 0965. Um, they're not all the same there's different pricing in here sometimes these spreads are pri oh let me refresh this are priced a little bit apart why is that what is that okay well first of all that's what we call proximity is where am i buying the spread okay where 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 am i buying now this is this is what's going to confuse you. So try to just follow close here and hold on to any questions here for a second. Okay. Now the market's at 0982. Let's say I bought at 0982 and it expires at 0992. Then what did I make? How many ticks? How many pips? How many? Yeah, I bought in 8.2, it expires at 9.2, so I got 10 bucks out of it, right? I'm not talking about fees and all that, like 10 bucks. Okay, what, what if, what if it did expire right here at, uh, it did expire here at 9.92, but I was able to buy it at 0970. So the market's here at 82, but I was able to buy for down here. So I bought it at 0970 and then it expired at 0992. So if I bought it 70 and it expired at 92, how much would I make? Yeah, 22, right? So if the market's at 82, but I can possibly buy lower than the market, that would be pretty cool, right? Because I'm just, when it expires here, see, this was confusing because people think, well, if the market's at 82 when you got in, you can only make from 82 to where it expires. Okay. When I get into a spread, it's not about where is the market at, where is the indicative at. It's where do I buy in at? 
what does this number right here say? If I want to buy a euro dollar, where's the market at? 0982. But where can I buy? Right here, I can buy this one at 0986. I can buy this one at 0985. These are priced a little bit above the market. Okay, but what if I could find one that was priced below the market? So wherever I buy in compared to where it expires or compared to where I get out is the amount I would make. Okay, so let me just cover that again because I'm sure I lost some people. I want you to understand the indicative is the current market. Okay, the bid and offer is where I can buy in or where I can get out. Okay. Well, Marsha, I'm not necessarily, no, I'm not saying that you should, I'm not saying that that's what you should do. I'm just trying to help understand. It, it'll kind of all come together here for you. Okay. In just a second. But does that make sense to everyone? If the market is at 0982, but I can buy below the market, that would be cool, right? Because I'm getting, I'm just getting extra money there without the market having to move. Right? Okay. So everybody follows that. Any questions about that right there? I'm not saying that's how you should do it and that's how to trade. I'm not saying that. I'm just trying to make sure everybody understands what in the, well, what we'd call in the money spread is. Okay. So everybody understand that. It's where I buy in compared to where I get out or where it expires. That's what I make. Okay. So I'm going to clear this drawing tool. And I'm going to show you something different here. So if the market right now is at 0982, but I buy in at 0990, okay, that's where I can buy in right now, 0990. So what do we have difference there? Well, the market's at 82. I bought in right here. So if the market starts to move up, 0983, 0984, 0985, 86, 87, 88, do you think that I'm making a dollar a tick as this moves up? Or do you think that I might not be making an actual dollar a tick until it gets to my level where I bought and then starts going as a dollar a tick? Right. Now, I'm not saying it won't move at all in value, okay? Because if this starts to move up a few ticks, this might move up a couple of dollars. But... I'm not going to get dollar for dollar, dollar for tick until it gets to my level there. Does that make sense to everyone? Let me know if it doesn't, because if you get this, if this is, if you get this that I'm covering right here, every light in your head is going to go off. Every light bulb is going to go off and you're going to understand why, what you've been doing wrong with spreads. So make sure to tell me, I'm going to stop for a minute and let some questions come in. Tell me if you don't get this right here. Please tell me. Okay, say it one more time. All right, so right now, see right here, the market's at 0982, okay? But I can buy into the spread at 0990. Let's just say that's one, that's one of the prices listed right here. Okay. Like see, for example, right here, the market's at 0982. Well, let's just look at a real example. All right. 0982. What can I buy for? 0986 if I want this particular spread, right? Okay, 
So if the market's at 0982, but I'm buying in right here at 0986, spreads move what? A dollar a tick, right? But if this starts to move up at 0982, 83, 84, 85, do you think I'm seeing my profit and loss move up a dollar a tick? Or do you think it's not going to start moving a dollar a tick and match it till it hits that level where I bought in at? Does that make sense? Okay, that's what we call premium. There's a couple pips, a couple dollars of premium built in there. Okay, yeah, it has to hit my level. And then when it hits my level, then I'll start seeing that P&L start moving more like a dollar a tick. Okay. Now, so let's say that I got into this trade and the market just didn't move. Now till expiration, it didn't move at all. What would I lose? Well, 0982 is where I bought in. Or no, I'm sorry. 0986 is where I bought in. And if the market expired at 0982, what's the difference there? From 8.6 to 8.2, four bucks. So yeah, I'd be down four bucks at 11 o'clock tonight in three, almost three hours. Because hey, I thought the market was moving. It, it didn't quite move there. You know, the, the market's right here when I bought in. I bought in right here. And eh, it didn't go up. It just kind of sat there. I lost that four dollar difference there. Well, I'm disappointed that I didn't make money because I thought the market was going up, but that I have a really bad night because the market was flat and I lost four bucks. I'm a lot happier than losing 50 or 80 bucks on a binary because the market didn't move. I can tell you that, right? Okay. So does that make sense? If the price I can buy in for is above the market, the market's going to need to get closer up to that price and then start. I'll start seeing dollar for dollar. Does, does that make sense there? Everybody see that? Okay. How many of you have ever made this statement to me, to someone else, or to yourself? I don't like spreads because I get in them and I don't seem to make a whole lot. Or I don't like spread. Somebody said it earlier in the one of the first questions will you address why sometimes a spread does not pay dollar for dollar oh mike okay with the underline like for example 4x okay you all have told yourself that many times right of hey i got into a spread the market moved like 15 ticks in my favor but my profit only was showing six dollars I don't understand this. Like spreads don't work. Like I don't get it because I was right. I was so right. The market went up and the market went up 15 ticks. I should have made $15. But my profit and loss right here only showed me making six. My balance only went up by six. Well, what do you think you probably did? When you got into that, the market was here. You probably bought in here. So yes, the market went up to here, but what did you make? You made from here to here. And you're wondering why did I not make a dollar a tick here to here? Is that making sense? Yeah, because there's a little bit of premium in there and you paid that. Like, are there some light bulbs going off now that you see it kind of visually on a chart here? And I'm not gonna lie to you. I did the same thing in the beginning. I didn't understand it. I did not understand because 
and I'm going to take some fault for this for you guys because what you have to understand is I can't overwhelm you and teach you everything in one webinar. So when I do a spreads 101, spreads basics webinar, I'm trying to get you to understand the concept of a spread, floor, ceiling, dollar a tick, not like a binary. Like that's what I'm trying to hit home. So what's stuck in your head? Dollar a tick, dollar a tick, dollar a tick. I just see it went up a tick. Where's my dollar? <laughs> right? That makes sense? Okay? So that's where you're focused. Okay? But that is the basics of how a spread works. Okay? The next thing you have to understand is where am I buying? The market moves. Where does it expire? Or where am I buying? The market moves. Where can I sell? Okay. The other thing is you have to look right here. If you're going to get out of it early, what's the difference from here to here? About five ticks. So you might give up a few ticks. Now, some there's not a lot going on with the market tonight. Sometimes there's only a tick or two in some of these bid-ass spreads, especially for like gold and NASDAQ. Okay. But what you have to look at is right here. Where did I buy in? 0984. That's my money spot. That's where I start making a dollar tick. But that's what you guys have been doing. I don't want to say doing wrong, but that's where you're getting confused and wondering why is this not working? Okay. It's because the market's right here and you're just hopping into some random spread that might be way up here or might be right here. Okay. And you don't start making that till it gets there. Does that make sense? And sometimes, and right now you might be like, oh, yeah, I might have done that. I don't know, but that makes sense. Okay? Now, I'm going to take this one step further and kind of help put this together for you. And I'm sorry I'm getting confused in here, taking all these on and off, but I'm trying to show you something. Okay. With spreads, okay? Basically, what is proximity? Proximity means are you buying above? Are, are, are you buying or selling above the market? Are you buying or selling below the market? Okay. Are you getting an out of the money spread, an at the money spread, or an in the money spread? Remember we talked about binaries last week, and I don't want you to confuse the two. Remember how we talked about out of the money binaries, right? Those real cheap binaries that the market had to move way up there, right? So yeah, they were lower risk and lower price, but the market had to move, okay? Same with spreads. Are you buying higher up where the market has to move there, okay? Now, spreads move slower when they're closer to the floor or the ceiling. Once again, I don't want you to confuse binaries and spreads, but I want to show you a binary example because you binary traders will get this. Have you ever bought a binary for like 40 bucks, say, and the market's moving in your direction, and you watch that thing start moving, right? 50 bucks, 60 bucks, 70 bucks, 80 bucks. Like it can move pretty fast, right? Everybody seen that? Like when you buy in and you're right and you kind of see that price going up and see your profit going up. Everybody with me on that? But what happens when that thing gets up to about $93? Does it still keep moving fast towards $100 or does it slow down? Slows down, right? And look, see these? 90, 91, 92, 94. See, even though there's a lot of ticks difference, look right here. See this one? 53 bucks. What's the strike price? 0979, right? Look at four ticks lower. 0975. What is it? From 53 to what? 71. Look at three ticks lower. 72 to 90. Look at three ticks lower. 
90 to 92, 92, 94. Have you guys ever seen that, like on a binary, whether you're buying or selling, if it gets close to the top at 100, it moves very, very slow, right? Or if you're selling and it gets close to the bottom at zero, it moves really, really slow. But right towards the middle, it moves fast because it's got to get towards that zero or towards that hundred. Everybody understand that? Has, has everybody seen that? Like when you do trade binaries, when it gets close to that bottom that of zero or the top of a hundred, it moves slower. Okay. And what happens when you're buying something that's real close up there? You pay what? Quite a bit more for it, right? Kind of pay a premium for that binary being so far in the money, right? You pay a little more for it. Everybody follow me? All right. Back to spreads. Forget about binaries. <laughs> okay. So, Forex spreads. These just opened up a little while ago. They're going to expire at 10 o'clock. All right. Um, let's see here. Right now, where's the market at? 098, oh, hold on. Let me just check one thing here. Okay. The market's at 0981. We're looking at the middle spread. Okay. What can I buy it for? 098. Okay. Now it's at 0982. I can buy it for 0985. So there's about three ticks difference there, right? About three ticks of premium. Not a big deal right okay now if I were to buy this I have to put up $55 well why is that well because the, the floor is what 930 and where I'm buying is 985 what's that difference 55 bucks right everybody follow that well, look at this top spread right here. Okay, it's 0982. What's that one gonna cost me to get into? I gotta buy into that at 0987. So there's a there's a little bit, there's a couple of ticks more premium in there, isn't there? But let's look at something. If I were to buy it, how much do I gotta put up? Seven bucks. Seven dollars is my risk. Why? Well, where's the floor? 980, and where can I buy? 987. So I'm much closer to the floor right here, right? So that's why there's not as much risk. Because why? I'm much closer to the floor, so I'm only having to put up seven bucks. But where's the market? 0982 and I'm buying in at 0987 so there's about five ticks or five dollars of premium in there five ticks or five dollars of kind of movement it's got to absorb in there right so since I'm buying real close to the floor it's not going to move as fast is it just like a binary at the floor or ceiling does that make sense? Please like type into the box here. Does everybody get that? And did everybody see how the middle spread doesn't have as much of that in there? Right? Everybody see that? So, let's look at, let's say I wanted to sell. We've been talking about buying. Yeah, Paul, don't worry about that last one. Yeah, yeah, don't worry about that last uh, decimal there, just this one, these first four. Yeah. So, what if I wanted to sell 
Well, the market's at 0982. I can sell this one for what? The middle one, 0980. I got two ticks, two bucks of premium in there. Not a big deal, right? No big deal. So I want to sell it. Boom. I got to put up 50 bucks to sell it. Why? Well, because the, the ceiling is what? 1030. And I can sell it for 980. So what's that difference? 50 bucks. That's why I got to put up 50 bucks because it's 50 ticks away from the ceiling. Makes sense, right? Okay. Well, what about this bottom spread? What if I want to sell this one? Oh boy, I like that. Look, $5 max risk. I only got to put up five bucks. I like that. We all love that. But where can I sell it at? 0975. And the market's where? 0981. So if I if, so I love this because why? Five dollar risk. But where am I selling at? I'm selling at 0975. So if the market does start to come down, Where does it got to get to before I start making a dollar a tick? It's got to get to right here, right? To 0975. Does that make sense? So, remember, if you understand spreads, there's three spreads here. What are they? Look at this one, the bottom one. What's the ceiling? 980. Going down to what? 880. Right? So, so I've got a spread that has a top of 9880 or 0980 going down. Right? So that's this spread right here. Okay? Then look at this. 0980 is the ceiling of this spread. It's the top. But look up here, same price. 0980 is the what? floor of this top spread, right? So at the same place, I've got another spread that goes up, okay? So, so the market's right here. It might go down, it might go up. So, don't you think that if I'm selling towards the top of this spread, saying the market's going to go down, if I choose this spread, that's going to have a really low risk, right? Because if I'm selling close to the ceiling, it, it can't go against me very far. I can only lose money to the top here, right? Everybody follow me there? So this bottom spread, if I'm going to sell, is going to be real low risk. I'm not going to put up a whole lot, right? Okay. Well, what about this top spread where it starts at the bottom right here where the market is and goes way up? Well, if I buy into that spread, I buy saying it's going up, it's probably going to be really low risk, right? Because if I buy saying it's going up, but I'm wrong and it goes down, I can only lose money to right there. So in general, 
when new spreads come out on the hour, the real lower, the lower risk spreads are what? Your top and your bottoms. Does that make sense? Does everybody understand that? Okay, so yeah, so your lower risk spreads are the top spread and the bottom spread. Okay, now, what is this spread at right here? Where's the market at? 0980. So this goes down to what? To 930 to 1030, right? Not time, but the price, 930, 1030. So that middle spread is going from up here at, see, 1030 down to 930. So the middle spread is what? Right in the middle. The price is right in the middle. So why it's the middle spread. Does that make sense? So if I get in right in the middle of a spread and I want to buy it, thinking the market's going up, how much money do I have to put up? Well, I got to put up from where I buy in down to the floor. So that's going to be more money to put up, right? Than this one to buy. Does that make sense? Somebody stop me if you're not catching these three things right here. Stop me now if you're not catching these three. Ask a question. Okay, Emmanuel, so let's look here. So these spreads just opened up at 8 o'clock, right? And about 8 o'clock, the market was at 0980. How do I know that? Because that's how they determine the spreads. So at 8 o'clock, the market was around 0980. So that's, what they, that's the price they use to make three spreads out of. So they take 0980 and see right here, these are 100 point wide spreads. So they take 0980 and they make that the ceiling of a spread going down 100 points, right? So they make that the ceiling of one spread going down 100 points, right? They also take 0980 and they make that the floor of one spread going up 100 points. See, 0980 going down 100. Then up here is 0980 going up 100. Okay, you got, got that, Emmanuel? Then they put a middle spread where 0980 is in the middle and it goes up 50 and down 50. So they're all three, they're all 100 points wide. Okay, but you've got one with a floor right here that goes up, one right here with a ceiling that goes down, or you can go right in the middle. Okay, so I think, let's see here, Mike, for the middle spread at the time of initial offering, if I enter at the current price at initiation, then I can never do better than a one-to-one -one risk reward ratio to improve on one to one, I need upper or bullish or lower. So the center spread is the best chance. More. Okay, let me answer all three of those questions. Okay, so let's take a look at something here. Okay, let me remove one thing. I appreciate your patience. We're going a little long here, but I hope this is helpful because we're doing it kind of a little bit different webinar tonight. Um, I'm going to get rid of this. Okay. So let's say that I want to buy. Let's say that I think the market is going up. Okay. Let's look. On the upper spread. Crap. 
Upper spread, where can I buy it? 0986, right? Okay, so upper spread, I can buy at 0986, about right here, let's say. Okay, so if I want to buy into this spread, that's where I'd be, that's where I can buy in as of right now, right? The middle spread, I can buy where? 0982. So I can get into this spread right about here. 0982. Currently, the market is um, right there. So I think the market's going up. I've got two different spreads to choose from. Would I ever look at buying this spread if I think the market's going up? Is there ever a reason to buy this spread thinking the market's going up? No, because you can't make any money on it, can you? Like it doesn't make it doesn't make any sense, right? Look, yeah, I mean I can buy it and make one dollar and risk not. That, that makes no sense, right? It's pointless. So I bought in. I think the market's going up. Which one of these spreads is going to start making me? And, and let's say I'm right. The market does start to go up. Which one of these spreads is going to make me money quickest? Dollar for dollar, dollar for tick. Right. The center, right? The middle one. Your middle spreads that are closer to the current market are always going to be the ones that move quickest and move more dollar for dollar. Does that make sense? Okay. Now, let's look at something else real quick. Remember that big, big one that goes all the way to tomorrow, the real big one that you can get right in the middle of? It's even a little cheaper by a tick, right? Okay, so now if I want to buy this one, the middle one, what do I got to put up? $52. I got to put up 52 bucks to get into that middle one, right? What if I want to buy the top one? I got to put up five dollars it's a big difference huh real big difference isn't it 50 bucks to get into this one or five bucks to get into this one so I'm gonna take a wild guess here and say for those of you that have said man I've tried those spreads and I get into them the market moves like 10, 12 points. I only make a few bucks. I don't like spreads. I'm going to probably bet you money you went with that spread right there every time. When you were trying out spreads because you wanted to see what how they worked, what did you do? You took the cheapest spread that you could find, didn't you? I'm not judging you. I did it too when I first learned spreads. You took the cheapest spread you could find because you wanted to figure out these spread things and you're like, I don't like them, they didn't move. The market moved 15 ticks and I only made like seven. I don't like it because you chose the cheapest spread you could find just to play with them, didn't you? Right? 
Yeah, Emmanuel says, I just did that exact same thing you said with my demo account and made four bucks. Oh, cool. There you go. <laughs> but that's what you did, right? You took the cheapest spread you could find to play with it, and then you wondered why it didn't work well. Just like if you were to say, I want to try all these binary things. Look, oh, sweet. I can buy that one for six bucks. Let me buy it. Oh, man, binaries don't work talked about this right you can't just go buy the cheapest thing out there you have to have a reason for buying it you have to have something you, you've got to buy the right one we talked about that last week for binaries right and like I said that's what we're gonna talk about this week for spreads okay so now everybody follow me here everybody understand where you probably messed up in your thinking of oh okay well that's why it didn't move every dollar for tick per tick because it had to get up here to where I bought in to start really getting my dollar for tick there you know like okay some light bulbs going on there Yeah, Mike, exactly. It's all about the delta. Yep. Yep, and that's where you made your mistake. Okay. So, now, I want to back up and, and, and say something here. I'm in no way telling you to not use these top spreads. I'm not telling you that at all. I'm telling you, you have to use them in the right way whatever your strategy or system is okay is it telling you the markets moving up and I think it's gonna move up a lot or is there a big news event about to come out that's gonna affect the euro and you think that that movement's gonna be pretty good size well if you think it's gonna be a pretty good size move You only have to spend five bucks to get into this. You have to spend 55 to get into this. So you could get 10 of these. So let's look at some. So if there's, if the market moves 15 ticks, okay? And it moves up to 0995. Okay, and that's it. Which spread did you prefer that you got into? Well, probably this one, right? Because, yeah, you had to put up a little more money, but you made more because this one started to make more quicker. Correct? Everybody, everybody follow me here? This one made money quicker. So even it only even though it only moved 15 ticks, you made a little more on this spread than you did this spread. Right? Okay. Let's say the market moved 30. Oh, sorry. Let's say the market moved 30 ticks. Okay, so the market actually moved 30 ticks. Well, you still made more money on this one because it started to make money quicker, correct? Right? You, you still made more on this one because it made money quicker. But how much did you put up to get into this one? Like 50 bucks, right? How much did you put up over here? Five, right? Everybody following me? So how many of these could you have gotten for the same amount? 10. 
So if you had 10 of these, granted, you didn't make anything really much here to here, but from here all the way up, you were making $10 a tick, having $50 tied up, or here making $1 a tick, having $50 tied up. Light bulb. Everybody just get that right there. Okay, but again, you would really only want to do that when you're expecting a good size move, okay? So what I'm showing you here is pros and cons. What's the con? What's the downside of these low risk trades that have to move a little bit before you make some money? Again, because those are the ones you get into and you're like, man, I wanted to put up like 5, 10, 12 bucks, but ugh, market didn't move much. So I didn't really make anything. Meh. But over here, if I'd have gotten in, in the middle, I, I might have made 8 or 10 bucks. I like that. So with, with a smaller move and just a, re, you know, if just your standard strategy or whatever, just a regular, with a smaller move, you're going to probably be happier with a middle spread that's gonna move more dollar for dollar, right? Does that make sense? But if you're expecting a big move, or you've got a, some time out there for it to move, or there's some news or whatever, yeah, you're gonna to have to realize you're not gonna really make anything till the market moves up to where you bought in. But if you can get 10 spreads for the same price, then you're at $10 a tick after that. Okay. Or yeah, you can do, do one of each. You know, you might get into one of these saying, all right, I'm going to make some money for the smaller moves, but I'll grab a couple of these cheapies in case it takes off. Whatever. Okay. Does that make sense? Is that kind of, are we seeing any light bulbs here? Like, oh, okay. Also, a lot of you are confused of why are there three different spreads? I don't get it. Which one do I pick? Well, now you know why there's three different spreads. You've got a top, a bottom, and a middle. Your top and bottoms are going to be your real cheap, low-risk ones, but they're going to take a little time for you to make anything on them. Okay? And it's the same... It's the same thing we just discussed, but in reversed in a sell situation. Okay. All right. Let me check out a few questions here. Marsha, do you offer reading chart webinars or is that up to us to zero in and read on price movement? Well, Marsha, that really just depends on what strategy or system that you're using. There's a ton of them out there. You know, um, I would tell you as far as us here at Apex, if you go to our website, um, if you're on uh, our website here, the main strategy, the main system that we use to trade spreads with, y'all can all check it out. You can watch step-by-step -step videos of it and see exactly what we do right here under the Apex Elite Room. Go right here to number three, step-by-step -step courses, and it's right there in green, iZone Sharpshooter Course. This is how the main way we trade spreads. Shows you some videos, shows you how we do it, entry and exits, shows you how we use our spread scanner, talks about what I just covered, spread misconceptions, getting the right one, simple way to choose spreads, Small account method for, you know, if you have a small account, what's the best way to do spreads? What's the, e it's all right there, like step by step, exactly how we trade spreads, how to use them with spreads. Check that out right there. Um, let's see here. Uh, Cody, if my profit target is just five bucks, buying for 50 and selling at 55 will be easier and quicker than 
five to ten you mean um, I'm saying if you're yeah if you're only expecting a smaller move in the market then yeah you're always gonna be better off with the middle spread yes um, yeah Emmanuel same situation if you're selling absolutely uh, Mike will prices move faster closer to expiration um, no, they'll, 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 well, the only way that a spread will, the only way the price will move faster, closer to expiration is if you were actually able to buy this spread, like down here. Let's say that you were able to buy something way down here and the market's up here. Well, the closer it gets to expiration, you're going to start to see that catch up quicker. Because if you if you can buy down here and it moves, you're still going to get close. You're not going to get exactly dollar for dollar, but you're still going to get close to dollar for dollar. And then when you get close to expiration, it has to catch up and boom, it'll move fast. Okay. So if you can buy something way down here, like with a lot of premium, that you're buying the premium, not paying the premium, it'll move faster at expiration. Okay. Um, Mark, so are binaries more profitable then? I'm, I'm not quite sure your question there, Mark, or what that was referring to. Um, on smaller moves, binaries can be, you know, more profitable, like just a couple of ticks move. But again, just one tick against you, held to expiration, it's all or nothing. So, all right, guys, um, did this help? We've covered the basics of spreads, but did this help help you understand why to choose a certain spread or how to choose the right spread and why you might have been choosing the wrong spread? I know some of you are asking a lot about strategies and systems and how do I do it, but that's that's another day. First of all, it's like why did one spread work and why didn't it? How and, and whoever said it in the beginning, I think it was. Um, I think it was you, Mike, said, why did they not move dollar for dollar sometimes? Did the light bulbs go off there? Do we got it? Do we understand now why there's three spreads? Top, bottom, middle. That's there for you. And you be able to pick which one you want. I want to go directionally, but I want to put up a little amount or a little more. I think there's going to be a big move or a small move. You have options. Okay, you have totally options. Okay, Cody says, thanks. I've been trying the $5 one for the straddle. It hadn't worked or it's worked 50% of the time. Now I know the reason. Good, good. I'm glad that helped out. Glad that helped. So, well, good, guys. We went way over. We've been about two hours on here, and I know, like I said, that this was a very different webinar. I, I didn't use my PowerPoint much. I just, I really think this was much more helpful. I'm going to try to start doing a little more of this on our Monday night webinars to be able to show you the platform, show you on a chart, and really kind of visualize it. Because I know for me it makes a lot more sense just to do this, not just tell you, oh, here's a ceiling and floor, and that's how they work. Like, let's get in there and do some examples. What can I buy it for right now? Where's the market at? Let's draw the box. Here's how it works. Okay? So, um, uh, let's see here. Tiki, yes, again, this webinar is being recorded. Okay. Um, if you want to watch this again, I'll have it up here for you in about an hour or less. Ah, I'll probably have it up really quick. If you're on our website, Apex Investing, go to Questions, Trading Questions Forum, and you just scroll down towards the bottom. Um, right here, watch webinars here, and it'll be right here under newest webinars. Just click that and you'll see it. I'll have it up there within less than an hour. Okay. So yeah, Mike, there's some different things we do there with combining them. We'll probably get into, we'll probably do a webinar of that here in a, here in a little bit. Um, you know, for, yeah, for traders with no experience starting off, I'm going to tell you to go right there where I just showed you watch webinars here and go to Nadex Spread Webinars. 
Watch this right here, the ins and outs of Nadex spreads. Watch that. And then go here to Elite Room. Step number three, iZone Sharpshooter course, and watch that, and then start demo trading. Oh, speeding is out. Was I too fast, Marsha? <laughs> Sorry about that. All right, if you're on the website, questions tab, trading questions forum. Go down to watch webinars here. Like if somebody's brand new, like that was the question. I'm brand new. I know nothing. What do I do? Go right there. Trading questions forum. Watch webinars here. Nadex spread webinars. Watch this right here called the ins and outs of Nadex spreads. Okay. You'll have a full understanding of Nadex spreads. Then go back to the main page of the website. Go right here. Apex Elite Room and Tools. Go down to step number three. IZone Sharpshooter course walks you through exactly how to trade spreads and then start demo trading spreads in Nadex. Don't spend hundreds of hours watching hundreds of videos and 50 different strategies at 50 different systems. Start with one, get it down, demo it, master it and demo it, be pro master it and demo, be profitable with and demo, move over to live, be profitable in live, then start adding on a second system. OK, um, that's exactly where I would tell you to go. And guys, again, yes, some of the we have some different indicators and memberships and rooms that, you know, are paid memberships. But all of this training, all this free education is all totally free for you on apexinvesting.com. You can get a free username and password. Watch all these. So take advantage of it. So. All right, guys. I appreciate your time. We've gone way over here. I'm going to let you go. I really hope this helped out. Thank you so much for staying on so late with me um, and putting up with a little bit different kind of webinar, but I really hope some light bulbs went off and you're having some aha moments, and I hope you're excited about spreads. Um, spreads are the way to go, especially for new traders, brand new traders. I, I would tell you, start with spreads before you ever touch a binary go with spreads and get them down guys. So if you have any other questions, uh, feel free to hit us up over on the Apex website. Uh, you can catch us either on the instant chat down here at the bottom or under the questions tab, third one down, you could submit a help desk ticket and we're more than happy to direct you to the right uh, strategy system, webinar, anything we can there for you to, uh, to get you going. Marcia says, thank you. The light bulbs look like Vegas tonight. Great. I'm glad the light bulbs went off. It was awesome seeing the comments coming in um, as we were going through going, oh, I get it now. Gotcha. So, uh, William, the best strategies for spreads is, is what I just showed right there to do right here. Apex Elite Room. Step number three, Eyes on a Sharpshooter course. That one right there. That is the one to use. OK. Yeah, that's the best one for spreads. Good. Robert, thank you so much. You've done some great. Tonight was your best. Well, I don't know if tonight was my best, <laughs> but I really appreciate the compliment. I tried to mix it up and do it a little bit different with these charts and uh, the visual examples. So I appreciate the compliment. I hope hope it was good for everybody. So, all right, guys. I hope to see you back next Monday night at uh, 7 p.m. Eastern time, and we will keep moving forward here on uh, go through our cycle of webinars here teaching you about nadex binaries and spreads so y'all have a great one hope everyone has a good holiday week and a great great um new year's be safe have fun and we will see you monday all right jim bob thanks so much uh you too guys thank you i really appreciate it Mike, thank you. All right, guys, have a great one.